Okay, so finally we come to the conclusion of this presentation. The conclusion uh, consists of four conclusion charts and then one main conclusion page to discuss. So the purpose of this, this is our first main conclu or first conclusion page. This is our first chart. The purpose of this chart, and this is one you've seen before, we're just re uh, reviewing it. Uh, the purpose of this chart is to display graphical uh, or hierarchical form of the complexities which must be overcome in order to provide a good future for processors and computing capabilities. In other words, uh, we need to solve some of the problems shown here in order to make the most of hybrid computing. Some of these branches have been well traversed over while there is still a lot of work which needs to be done in other branches of the tree. So it's a good overview showing what work is left. In conclusion, we really won't be able to get a good grade dependable, reliable software which will survive in this environment, uh, this hybrid uh, processor environment, new frontier, until a lot of the challenges shown in this tree have been confronted and the complexities somewhat removed. Okay, so this next chart shows how much work has been done in an attempt to conquer each of these hurdles shown on the previous page. This isn't a full table of work and research that has been conducted, but it does show some of the latest work that's been done. Along with showing the possible solutions, uh, this chart also attempts to show which professions have been taking care of which hurdles. So, uh, you know, this as the red dots are engineers, the, the blue dots are computer scientists, of course there's always going to be some integration and overflow. You're going to have some engineers working on these, you're going to have computer scientists, of course, working on all, the, all these problems, but this just uh, is trying to display uh, which field of study is uh, mainly in charge of conquering which solutions. One last thing I'd like to note is that several of the solution boxes have been colored in red, such as this one, this one, and this one. These, solu these are solutions which are also unfortunately part of the challenge. So if you look, this one is parallel, parallel programming. Uh, that's uh, one of the solutions, or separate out the obvious parallel paralleling to be uh, compiler automatic. So this is one of the solutions, but parallel programming is also one of the problems. So you kind of need to kink out the parallel programming before, uh, in order to help make the GPU complexity uh, or the GPU programming less complex, because that is one of the inherent, you know, uh, natures that makes GPU programming so complex is that when you program on the GPU. You're doing it because uh, you want to parallel process something. Uh, another thing which is going to improve GPU uh, complexity would be to uh, make the GPU programs more portable. Well, that's a great solution, but that's also one of our problems which we haven't uh, thoroughly solved yet. So in conquering all these challenges, it would provide us with faster hardware, easier to understand program development environments, environments which promote parallel and series hybrid programming. Uh, it would also provide us with stable, reliable engineering and sci scientific and other types of software. And lastly, uh, accomplishing all of uh, everything in this above table would lead us to better, more efficient, faster, and less bur burdensome user experiences. Okay, so this next slide tries to break down parallel programming into subcategories. Uh, talking about parallel programming can be become overwhelming at times because there are so many types of parallel programming. This chart help, attempts to show the different types of parallel programming that exists and also attempts to show how each type of parallel parallelism might be best tackled. And this is just my own opinion and uh, which came from uh, after reading the research and seeing where other people are going with it. So this is just my best attempt to try to predict where parallel programming uh, will end up and it'd be nice to get some uh, critical input 
into where other people uh, see uh, parallel programming heading and where they believe or or how they believe uh, it'll be tackled in the future. So in the end, we're really going to have to decide where parallelism belongs and how to abstract the process as much as possible. Okay, so this is the last conclusion chart. Uh, this last chart shows one very simple decision tree to help uh, one determine whether a process would be best run on a GPU or CPU. Hopefully many of the mathematical algorithms uh, and data structures items which are generic to all software and reusable can have the GPU CPU determination taken care of by the language by the compiler uh, integrate, integrated in other words into the programming language itself. Then hopefully some of the project software specific code or pseudocode can be analyzed by other programs to determine the ideal locations for parallelism. The main takeaway uh, here is that there is a need for better, better models and guidelines as well as programs which can help determine where and how processes run most efficiently. Okay, and finally we come to our main conclusion page. So in conclusion, it would more than likely be in our best interest to pursue hybrid computing in order to keep up with market demands. Future res research and development depends heavily on the computing power. And here's just uh, uh, several examples of uh, what's been, what uh, they do in research, what they're able to do in research with uh, the computing power. So like in space, uh, they're able to predict the future of planets and solar systems and universes to a certain degree. Uh, in medicine, they're finding techniques to find cures for cancer and other diseases which are being taken out of the labs and uh, designed into computer software. So you're able to do your testing uh, on computer software instead of uh, actual humans or uh, lab species and this this is nice because it's a lot cheaper but there's uh, a, and there's a lot uh, less hazardous side effects to humans if you test it on uh, something else on your computer beforehand but this is going to require a, a lot more uh, software development than what they have right now. Uh, also, when it comes to environmental engineering, uh, they collect data on it, on the uh, environmental and weather patterns to create a more eco-compatible hum human environments. And you see in, and in science, they have computers aid them in solving complex mathematical computations to make further strides in scientific discoveries. So as you can see, there is a lot that depends on the continued growth and development of our processor's power. The forward growth of humanity, the ability for us to be able to understand how to properly interact with and improve the environment around us heavily depends on our continued efforts to improve the brain of our computers.